Ever wondered why salt melts ice or why adding salt to water raises its boiling point? These are everyday examples of a fascinating concept in chemistry. Colligative properties of solutions. Now what do we mean by solutions? Simply put, a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. It could be a combination of gases, liquids, or solids. In our everyday life, we encounter solutions like the air we breathe, the salt water in our oceans, and even the brass in our doorknobs. But not all solutions are created equal. They can be categorized into two types, electrolytes and non-electrolytes. Electrolytes are substances that, when dissolved in water, break apart into ions, which are charged particles. These ions allow the solution to conduct electricity. Common examples of electrolytes include table salt or sodium chloride and baking soda or sodium bicarbonate. On the other hand, non-electrolytes are substances that don't break down into ions when dissolved in water. As a result, these solutions do not conduct electricity. Examples of non-electrolytes include sugar and ethanol. But here's where it gets interesting. The way these substances dissolve and interact on a molecular level has a big impact on the properties of the solution. These are what we call colligative properties, and they include phenomena like the relative lowering of vapor pressure, the elevation of the boiling point, the depression of the freezing point, and osmotic pressure. These properties can seem a bit strange at first. After all, how can adding a little bit of salt to water change its boiling point or its freezing point? But that's the beauty of chemistry. The smallest changes on a molecular level can have a big impact on the world around us. So buckle up because we're about to dive deep into the world of solutions and electrolytes and explore the incredible impact of colligative properties on our everyday lives. By the end of this video, you'll understand these seemingly strange phenomena and more. Colligative properties are those properties that depend on the number of solute particles in a solution, not on the nature of the solute particles. Let's dive into these intriguing properties that alter the behavior of solutions. There are four main colligative properties we'll discuss today. Relative lowering of vapor pressure, elevation of boiling point, depression of freezing point, and osmotic pressure. First up, relative lowering of vapor pressure. This one's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? But don't worry, it's simpler than it sounds. When you dissolve a non-volatile solute in a liquid, the vapor pressure of the liquid decreases. Imagine you're making iced tea. The sugar you dissolve in the water doesn't evaporate with the water. So the overall vapor pressure of the solution is lower than that of the water alone. Next, we have the elevation of boiling point. Simply put, when you add solute to a solvent, the boiling point of the solvent increases. Think about adding salt to a pot of boiling water. The salt makes the water take longer to boil. That's because the boiling point is elevated. Then there's the depression of freezing point. This is the opposite of the boiling point elevation. When you add solute to a solvent, the freezing point of the solvent decreases. So if you sprinkle salt on an icy sidewalk, the ice melts. That's because the salt lowers the freezing point of the water. Last but not least, we have osmotic pressure. This is the pressure required to stop osmosis, the movement of solvent through a semi-permeable membrane from a less concentrated solution to a more concentrated one. Think of a raisin in a glass of water. Over time, the water moves into the raisin, causing it to swell. That's osmosis in action. So, colligative properties are all about the number of particles, not their type. Interesting, right? Did you know that adding a non-volatile solute to a solvent lowers its vapor pressure? But what does this really mean? Well, let's break it down. Vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by a vapor in thermodynamic equilibrium with its condensed phases at a given temperature in a closed system. It's like a signature of a liquid unique to each substance and dependent on temperature. Now, imagine a pot of water boiling on your stove. Those bubbles you see are formed by the water vapor pressure becoming equal to the atmospheric pressure. Now, what happens when you add a non-volatile solute like salt to that water? A non-volatile solute, by definition, doesn't readily evaporate into a gas under existing conditions. So when you add it to a solvent, it decreases the number of solvent molecules on the surface that can escape into the vapor phase. This, in turn, lowers the vapor pressure of the solution. This phenomenon is called the relative lowering of vapor pressure, and it's one of the four colligative properties of solutions. It's governed by Raoult's law, named after French chemist François-Marie Raoult, which states that the vapor pressure of an ideal solution is dependent on the vapor pressure of each chemical component and the mole fraction of the component present in the solution. 
In simpler terms, Raoult's law tells us that the vapor pressure of a solution is proportional to the mole fraction of the solvent. So if you increase the amount of solute, thereby decreasing the mole fraction of the solvent, the vapor pressure of the solution decreases. This is why when you cook pasta, you add salt to water. The salt decreases the water's vapor pressure, which means it takes more heat to make the water boil, effectively increasing the boiling point. So, the more solute you add, the lower the vapor pressure of the solution. This is a fundamental concept in chemistry, and understanding it can help you make sense of how solutions behave in various conditions. Ever noticed how adding salt to water changes its boiling and freezing points? Let's dive into the concepts of boiling point elevation and freezing point depression to understand this phenomenon better. Boiling point elevation is the phenomenon where the boiling point of a liquid, a solvent, increases when another compound is added or when a non-volatile solute is introduced into the solution. It's a colligative property, which means it's dependent on the amount of solute particles, not their identity. So, whether you add salt or sugar to your water, the effect on the boiling point is the same given you add the same amount of either. Now here's the science behind it. When a solute is added to a solvent, it disrupts the equilibrium between the liquid and gas phases of the solvent. This means the solvent molecules need more energy to escape into the gas phase, which translates to a higher boiling point. On the other hand, Freezing point depression is the process where the freezing point of a solvent decreases when a solute is added. Again, it's not about what you add, but how much you add. When a solute is introduced into a solvent, it disrupts the crystalline order necessary for freezing, making it harder for the solvent to solidify. Thus, it lowers the freezing point. Mathematically, these concepts are expressed as TBBLKBM and TFKFM, where TB and TF are the changes in boiling and freezing points respectively, KB and KF are the boiling and freezing point elevation constants, and M is the molality of the solution. These equations underscore the direct proportionality between the change in boiling or freezing point and the molality of the solution. The more solute particles there are, the greater the change in boiling or freezing point. So next time you're cooking, remember that adding salt does more than just season your food. Osmosis isn't just for biology, it's a crucial concept in chemistry, too. When we're talking about solutions and electrolytes, osmosis plays a significant role. So what is osmosis? It's a natural phenomenon where solvent molecules move from an area of lower solute concentration to an area of higher solute concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. But why are we talking about osmosis in chemistry? That's because it helps us understand something called osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is the pressure that needs to be applied to a solution to prevent the inward flow of water across a semi-permeable membrane. Now let's connect the dots. Osmotic pressure isn't just a theoretical concept, it's a practical tool that chemists use to determine the molecular weight of solutes. You might be thinking, how does that work? Well, osmotic pressure depends on the concentration of solute particles in a solution, and the concentration, in turn, depends on the molecular weight of the solute. So if we can measure the osmotic pressure, we can calculate the molecular weight. This is done using the formula, PI equals sign NRT V, where PI is the osmotic pressure, N is the number of moles of solute, R is the universal gas constant, T is the temperature in Kelvin, and V is the volume of the solution in liters. By rearranging this formula, we can solve for n the number of moles, which gives us n equals sine PIVRT. And since the number of moles equals mass divided by molecular weight, we can further solve for the molecular weight, giving us the formula molecular weight equals sine mass asterisk RT slash PIV. So through osmotic pressure measurements, we can determine the molecular weight of a solute. And this is just one of the fascinating ways that colligative properties like osmotic pressure help us explore the microscopic world of molecules and atoms. So osmotic pressure can actually help us figure out the molecular weight of a solute. Pretty cool, right? We've covered a lot of ground today, delving into the fascinating world of colligative properties. We've explored how non-electrolytes and electrolytes influence properties like vapor pressure, boiling point, freezing point, and osmotic pressure. We've also discovered how these concepts are used in determining molecular weights. 
It's incredible to see how these principles play out in our everyday lives from the kitchen to the lab, isn't it? So the next time you sprinkle salt on your driveway in winter, you'll know the chemistry behind it. Subscribe for more because you won't find me later.